Hey guys, I'm John from John's DIY Playground. Today we're going to be modifying a cooler to make it a Franken cooler for the Anova sous vide device for our immersion cooking. I'm going to be using some simple PVC parts that you can get in any hardware store and modifying it in such a way that once the hole's in the cover, you can still use it as a cooler after, and I'll show you how that works. So let's get started. So the cooler we're using is a Rubbermaid Victory model cooler. It's model 1935-1937. It's a 34 quart or about eight and a half gallon cooler. And uh, some people ask on the forums and around the internet, uh, what's the maximum size the Innova can take care of? And in general rule of thumb, but not stated by the company is about five gallons of water or five and a half gallons for the 900 watt Wi-Fi second generation. But I've seen reports on the forums from other guys who have modified coolers as big as 48 quarts, and they're doing 40 or 60, or I'm sorry, 20 to 40 pound pork shoulders with no issues. The big key is to use preheated water in the cooler because that's going to help the uh, the Anova along because uh, cooling it down, or I'm sorry, the meat being cold cools down the water. You need to add warm water. Start with warm water, and then it won't take so much energy to get started in a cooler of this size. I've chosen a cooler this big because I wanted to be able to feed at least 10 people or more in a large gathering and so uh, that's the purpose for this otherwise you don't need such a big cooler and again this is 34 quarts or about eight and a half gallons inside. So the next big question you need to answer for yourself is where am I going to put the hole? Um, there's a big debate of course about that and in my opinion I like having it in the middle. I can imagine long rib racks going to either side of this cooler in a certain situation. Um, others say that being off to the corner is a better idea. It gives you better overall circulation inside the chamber and gives you more room over here. But for my impressions of what I'm going to do, I can imagine ribs again. So I'm thinking about putting it in the middle off to the side here. And then I have room on either side for good circulation. So I'm about to mark off where we're going to drill our hole for this and we're not going to use this bracket at all but for demonstration purposes of where I want to place the hole is you can see sous vide actually has a little bit of a gap spacer here um, so that the circulator has space behind it when it's um, in operation so I want to make sure I allow for that and from the edge of the cooler lid that means that I need to be at least one inch approximately from the edge of the cooler lid to the, where the first beginning of the hole is. So I'm going to use that for a guideline and make a mark on top. I'm also being a little bit concerned about the cooler shape here. It gets really, really thick on the uh, side here. So even if I move in a little further than an inch, let's say if I move into about, well, let's say an inch and a half, it's going to save me, um, working with the drill and uh, cutting the hole opening with all this extra material. So ideally, I think I'm going to go in about one and a half inches. So we've got our setup ready to go. I have a two and a half inch diameter hole saw here, which is slightly smaller than this two inch PVC coupler. Um, again, it is a two inch, not a two and a half inch. This is a two inch coupler, but it's outside diameter is just over two and a half inches. So we're going to have to open up the hole with a Dremel once we're done cutting. I did the offset for this um, mandrel to go into the center spot. So I offset that by an um, inch and a quarter, gave myself that original inch and a half we talked about, and then I marked my center mark. So let's drill this hole and see what we do. have to finish off the inside so let's have a look yep, you can see there we've got just a little bit left actually you know what the way this is looking I'm gonna keep going from the outside if it'll let me this particular hole saw is not very deep so I might be at max depth now let's see what we can do <laughs> I wiggled it a little bit and that helped me get a little further, but I'm not quite there. There we go. Got our hole. Perfect. 
So I mentioned we're going to use the Dremel tool and open this thing up so it matches the diameter here and we get a nice snug fit. Also with the Dremel tool uh, cutter, I'm going to take out this ridge on the inside of the coupling because the ridge will not allow the ANOVA sous V to pass through. So this ridge has to come out and I will grind in here and show you what we ended up with. All right, guys, a couple pro tips I'm going to share with you before uh, we get any further. The uh, number one thing is you're going to get really messy with the damn PVC chips, so uh, <laughs> be ready to shake all your clothes off. I'm glad I'm doing this outside. Secondly is um, you want this thing to be snug, but let's say not too snug, because what I found is if you're trying to put this thing in the hole and it's really, really snug, the sous vide isn't going to fit that nice anymore. It'll actually be almost impossible to put it through. You wouldn't think that this piece is compressible, but it really is. So you want to make sure you have enough clearance and gap in this hole so that uh, you know it's going to not make it hard to insert or take out the sous vide. So anyway, one other thing is um, with this particular cooler, I feel like I'm pretty lucky because uh, when I open it, I can open it without removing the sous vide and that just got me thinking about a pro tip is uh, if you are one of those people that say hey I'm gonna put mine on the edge make sure you put it on the the hole on the side with the hinge so when you open it then the sous vide doesn't need to be removed it can be opened and closed without uh, having to pull it out and put it back in so that's just something to share with you and hopefully uh, help some people out the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some 100 grit sandpaper I have here and rough up the outer edges of this uh, coupler and then we're going to mix up some, <laughs> as the wind's blowing, some JB Weld plastic welder with a piece of cardboard and a mixing stick. Um, this is actually JB Weld that I found at an automotive store. Um, you can use it for plastic bonding especially for like fascias and stuff like that that are automotive but it would be great for this application and it's pretty thick and it sets up pretty quick so any gaps that we have will be filled in by that JB Weld and we should have a really really good bond so I'll mix that up and we'll get this thing welded in. All right, guys, our cooler is all done, and it's set up really nice. I'm really happy with the results here. Um, the one last thing I promised to show you was that you can still use this as a regular cooler when you're not using it for sous vide. So you pick up one of these 2-inch to 1.5 adapters that has a threaded uh, inside and one of these 1.5-inch uh, plugs, and just put those two together like so, and you can just hand tighten it and then when you put it in just give it a little turn and you've got an airtight gap seal there and it's going to work just fine as a regular cooler still so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you learned something if you like it please leave a thumbs up for me and subscribe to get new notifications for future videos this is john from john's diy playground have a great day